In recent years, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for international seminars. They were joyous occasions as Master and Disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During her visit to meet with our association members, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of fellow initiates. Throughout the ages, compassionate, enlightened masters have urged people to surrender to the greater universal power by seeking the divine within, from which all other goodness and happiness follow. This message was echoed again in Supreme Master Ching Hai's discussion, The Legend of Lao Tzu, with our association members on September 7, 2008. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Now, here the story say that Lao Tzu originally name was Li Er. Yes. The legend say that on the night he was conceived. His mother saw an infant wrapped up by the sun, the moon, and the clouds. On the morning of his birth, three suns rose from the east, and after his suckle, magic water came out of the mouth of nine dragons. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> And don't look at me. <laughs> I am wondering, just like you. <laughs> I'm wondering, what is it all about? That's one impressive baby. Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> just like the Buddha, you know, when he was born, there's seven lotus, you know, uh, bloom under his feet and he walk on it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no need midwife, nothing. He come out by himself <laughs> and he walks you. <laughs> That's also impressive baby. We have some impressive baby in the East. And we didn't hear such thing in the West, huh? <laughs> okay. Even in the West, if people have such story, they would not write it. You know, they think, ah, oh, just nonsense, <laughs> no such thing. The Eastern people, they, you know, more diligent. They write out whatever happened, huh? And you believe it or not, it's your problem. <laughs> Why not, eh? Yeah, you just tell the truth. People believe or not believe, doesn't matter, right? Mm. Water came out of the months of nine dragons. Oh, I don't know that nine dragons, where it is, but the three suns rose from the east. Ah, it's similar to Jesus Christ's birth, eh? The bright star that uh, appeared from the east, right? Also from the east. I have everything from the east. And then have led three wise men all the way to the mango where Jesus was to pay homage to him and offer something for comfort for the Son of God. And similar here, uh, the three sons rose from the east, and after his circle, magic came out of the mouth of nine dragons. Probably there were nine dragons, a statue or some sort at the time, or there was a river, a nine dragon. Yeah? And perhaps there were nine dragons in that river, so they call it nine dragons. Or maybe it resembles nine dragons, you know? Yeah. And people believe in the East that dragons are the ones who make water, who make rain and all that. Mm. So this is just maybe symbolic talk, huh? Or maybe someone who has practiced as spiritual and saw something happening like that, yes. The three, three suns rose from the East, this you have to take it with a pinch of candy. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> now, what they probably meant was that someone is meditating, yeah, and saw the sun. You know, just like when you meditate, you saw the sun inside. And these are three suns or four suns or sometimes even thousand suns, yeah, the, the brightness of it, like that. Probably when he's born, uh, the whole earth is very happy, the universe celebrates, you know? So some practitioner take this energy 
and also see something, you know, like three suns from the east or nine dragons with plenty of water. That means uh, very abundance, you know, so, so the people. Because in the old time, people were relying on rains and river water. Much of the time, relying on rain. Eh? And then, uh, so if people see something like the water come out of the nine dragons, yes, or the, uh, the sunrise, something like that, this is a very auspicious omen. Yeah, the water come out of the nine dragon's mouth, and that means they have a lot of water. They're going to have a lot of harvest, good harvest. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's a symbol of good luck. Ah, all right. Okay, continue with Leo's life. Leo was a very um, exceptional child. It's not normal. At three. His body radiated a golden glow, you know, the aura, golden aura, already at three years old. At five, he gazed at the sun and smiled and looked at the moon and sighed. <laughs> Probably he was a solarian and moonarian, yeah, trying to get the uh, energy from the sun to sustain himself more than ordinary mean of food, you know, the extra, extra. At seven, he learned to swallow the rays of the sun, the moon, and the stars. He swallowed them. <laughs> he eat them? No, but perhaps he has learned the art of taking prana, from natural phenomena, yeah, from natural bodies in the celestial realm, in the, in the firmament, yes. Just like nowadays, some people live from the sun, yeah, sun rays, and uh, from everything that they, they take in, you know? We saw on TV the man who eats only sun, who live from the sun, yeah, and he drinks just a little water every day, remember? Uh. And this is a true story, you know, like in the Yogananda biography, he also recounts many people who, who doesn't eat normal food, but live from air or sun or what they call prana, you know, the chi. In Chinese they call it chi. The chi is everywhere from the ground you walk to the air around you, from the trees, forest. Yeah, especially in the forest and mountain, the chi are purer than normal here. Yeah. And uh, people can live from that as well. There was one person, a woman from the West, I mean the Occidental people, and she, she also tried to live on air like that. And she said whenever she's up in the mountain or somewhere like remote area, and she can sustain the non, non-eating state, yeah, a long time, longer. But whenever she went down back into the city, she cannot hold it very well. Perhaps the air, the chi, you know, in the atmosphere in the mountain and the forest is more conducive for some, for, for some people, yeah. Some people, they can just live anywhere and also live on air as well. Yogananda, he has uh, told us the story of uh, Teresa Neumann in Germany. Yes, that has been proven even by doctors. That she never ate. She just uh, swallowed a piece of waffle Thin, you know, like paper, like piece of paper, like you know those uh, they're consecrated in the church. They give you a waffle uh, cake, very thin, like a paper, like a piece of this paper. Yeah, and she swallowed that every day, as a ritual of a nun. You know, that's it, and nothing else. And she lived like that until she is gone. I myself, I told you already that I knew also one nun in Taiwan. Eh? She lived until. Sixty something, and she has never eaten anything since a long time, many many years. Maybe since her thirty or something. Yes, since she became a nun, and then she just don't eat. But she drinks a little bit of water that uh, consecrated by the compassion mantra. That is supposed to be the mantra from Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. Yeah. So every day they, they, they do this uh, ritual, you know, like in the church you get up and 
and you pray and sing song, yeah, praising God. So uh, Buddhist temple also in the morning you wake up, you sing uh, the sutra and the mantra and the old text, yeah, and then uh, and then consecrate the water by that, bless the water by that, and then she drink a little bit like that every day. She really doesn't eat anything. <laughs> so this thing happened, hey? Yeah. So perhaps Lao Tzu, when he was young, he already began to learn the art of a Solarian, Breatharian, Manarian, you know, Waterian, whatever, yeah. Uh, it's true that we don't have to really eat to live. It's true like that. I know that. Yeah. So in case you don't have any food, don't don't panic. Just remember, remember you have uh, the source of all sustenance within you. Just call on to that force to sustain you. That's it. Really simple. And continue your Kuan Yin practice. In that case, we save a lot of more time. Also, what's wrong with it? You know, I mean, don't have to panic. Right? No need to wash dishes. No need to go shopping. Nothing. So. Don't panic, okay? Don't worry about food shortage. Don't worry about water shortage. Don't worry even about the end of the world. We are doing uh, things like informing people, vegetarian, all that, all because of compassion, yeah? All because we want people to awaken within themselves their own noble nature, their own compassion, and their own loving great self again. That's all, okay? So don't worry about dying or have no food. If you have no food, you pray, okay, to the inner divine self, which provides things for everything on earth and all the whole the universe, yeah? The air also provided by that source. Yeah, the water also manifested by that source. We also are manifested by that loving source, which we have within ourselves, the source of all life. So we don't worry about that, okay? If we have food, we eat. If we don't have, then we don't eat. Have a simple philosophy. <laughs> and if we don't have water, same, same philosophy, okay? Don't drink. <laughs> but uh, as we work harder, like the way you do, yes, you go out and distribute flyer and all that, then uh, we will have uh, more food, more water, plenty, don't worry, okay? And if not, then I told you already. Don't say that I did not tell you, huh? The source of food, the source of sustenance, the source of life is within you. Call on that source any time you need, okay? Understand? Don't worry about anything at all. It has been a great joy to have your loving company for today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Join us again on Monday for part three of The Legend of Lao Tzu. Now, Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Animal World, our co-inhabitants, coming up next after Noteworthy News. We wish you a happy and blessed week. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.